going out and the two, you know, uh, meet and create boundary condition that we think are finite boundaries. And so I start to extrapolate on that and later on I realize that there is a simple geometric solution to the riddle. So in a simple geometric solution here, I'm going to prove to you that infinities and finite system are absolutely related. Actually, one cannot exist without the other. And um, so we'll make a boundary. We'll call it a finite boundary. This is a circle. And it encloses a certain volume, right? It could be a sphere in the space. So don't reduce it necessarily to a circle. And then inside it, we're going to put an equilateral triangle. Now, that triangle in a sphere could be a tetrahedron. Everybody knows what a tetrahedron is? It's one of these, right? And we can polarize that tetrahedron uh, because the universe has spin. Things spin in the universe, and when they spin, there's polarity. So it's okay. You can polarize it. So you can polarize the triangle. And interestingly, right away, you got an ancient symbol that you can find in many, many different cultures all around the world, although it's best known by the Jewish culture as the Star of David or the Star of Zion. Well, if you look carefully, you find that as soon as I polarized the first tetrahedron, I created new boundaries that have the exact same geometry that I started with except these boundaries are one step smaller, right? They're one um, gradient or one iteration smaller. Well, what's important to remember here that each of these boundaries define a very specific center, right? Like this boundary here, is this is its center and this is its center and all of the centers are all different from all other centers. That means that each of the boundary, although they are part of a similar geometry that is in, interacted with each other, meaning one cannot exist without the other ones, they all have their own very specific coordinates in space-time and they observe the rest of the fractal structure from its own very specific point of view that no other boundary in the system has. You all following this? It's an important point. Now, you can polarize those, and you'll get smaller boundaries again. And again, each one is a very individual boundary. And you polarize those, you get smaller ones, and you know, you can go to infinity doing that. So if I had this program running on my computer, it could keep zooming in and making more boundary and zooming in and making more boundaries and it would go to infinity. Like as long as the computer was running, it would keep going. However, I would never, ever, ever, ever escape or exceed the first boundary I've made for myself. So within the context of a finite space, I've embedded infinite amount of information, infinite amount of divisions. That means that if this is true, and you know, if it's geometrically true, and if it's mathematically true, then it most likely is true, uh, you could take the boundary of any of your atoms, or the boundary of your cells, and divide them and divide them and divide it to infinity, meaning that you have an infinite amount of information, an infinite amount of divisions within yourself. So all of a sudden, you're starting to have a mechanical and mathematical understanding of the infinite nature of your existence. It's no longer just a metaphysical concept. It's no longer a belief or dogma. It's actually a mathematical equation. 